Revered as the land of many waters, Guyana is a mesmerizing blend of dense rainforests, rolling savannas, and the mighty Essequibo River that winds through it. It was initially discovered by the indigenous Arawak and Carib people, who inhabited this country as far back as the first millennium BC. These indigenous tribes originated from South Africa and modern-day Venezuela and Colombia. But what if I told you that today, over 40% of the locals in this country are actually of Indian descent? Yes, you heard that right. Despite being a country in South America, Guyana is teeming with Indians. And in this video, we're going to expose the why factor of this statement. Where did they come from? When did they first arrive? Why did they choose to settle so far away from their homeland? And most importantly, where are they now? Ready to unlock the real mystery behind Indians in Guyana? Before you do, please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you never miss another video. That said, let's find out what the reality is about Indians in Guyana. Located between Venezuela, Brazil, and Suriname, with the Atlantic Ocean caressing its northern shores, Guyana proudly sits as the only English-speaking country in South America. It covers an area of around 214,970 square kilometers and has a population of approximately 780,000 people. Guyana is home to extensive tropical rainforests, which are part of the larger Amazon rainforest. These rainforests are characterized by lush vegetation, an incredible variety of tree species, and diverse array of wildlife. The country is intersected by numerous rivers, including the Essequibo, Demerara, and Burbish rivers. The Essequibo River is one of the longest in South America and plays a vital role in Guyana's geography. Kaitia Falls, situated on the Pataro River in the Kaitia National Park, is one of the world's largest single-drop waterfalls. It plunges approximately 226 meters, 741 feet, surrounded by pristine rainforest. The Pacaraima Mountains and the Guyana Highlands, which extend into Guyana, contribute to the country's varied topography. The Rupununi region features vast savannas bordered by mountainous terrain. Along the coast, mangrove swamps protect the shoreline, providing habitats for various marine and bird species and serving as nurseries for thousands of fish. The capital city of Guyana is Georgetown, the country's main economic activity, traditionally revolved around agriculture, particularly the cultivation of sugarcane, rice, and other crops. Additionally, mining, including gold and bauxite extraction, has been a significant contributor to the economy. In recent years, the discovery of oil reserves off the coast has become a transformative factor in Guyana's economic landscape, with oil production and exports becoming increasingly important. Before the arrival of the Indians, Guyana was inhabited by various indigenous tribes, including the Arawaks and Caribs. The earliest European contact with indigenous peoples in Guyana occurred during Christopher Columbus's third voyage in 1498. However, significant European settlement occurred in the 17th century, with the Dutch establishing colonies along the Essequibo River. The Dutch and the British vied for control of Guyana during the colonial era. Dutch plantations were established, and the Dutch West India Company brought African slaves to work on these plantations. The British, who later took control of the region, continued to develop sugar and other agricultural industries. Guyana gained independence in 1966, and the indigenous people's rights and cultures have received much deserved recognition in the post-independence era. Efforts have been made to address historical injustices promote cultural preservation, and empower indigenous communities. Today, Guyana continues to be home to various indigenous tribes, including the Arawak, Waiwai, Makushi, and others. Their histories, languages, and cultural practices contributing to the diversity of the Guyanese society. Guyana's strategic location as a bridge between the Caribbean and the vast South American continent has shaped its identity, making it a cultural melting pot with influences from Africa, Europe, Asia, and the indigenous peoples who have called this land home for centuries. 
Our story begins in the mid-19th century, a time when the lush landscapes of South America were witness to the arrival of a community whose resilience would shape the course of Guyanese history. The year was 1838, and the British Empire, seeking to fill the labor void on its South American sugar plantations, embarked on a venture that would forever alter the demographic landscape of Guyana. The Hesperus, a vessel navigating the treacherous waters of the Atlantic, carried the first wave of indentured Indian laborers. The ship anchored in Georgetown, the colonial capital, bringing with it men and women torn from their homeland, seeking opportunity amidst uncertainty. These were poor people driven by economic hardship in British India, enticed by the promises of employment and a chance at a new life. As the gangplank descended onto the shores of Guyana, these indentured laborers set foot on an unfamiliar terrain, a land vastly different from the Gangetic plains they called home. Their arrival marked the commencement of a challenging journey, not only of distance, but of survival, and the forging of a new identity. These pioneers faced the challenges of adapting to a new environment, creating a bond with both the land and its people. Their journey was marked by hardship, resilience, and and the indomitable drive to carve a future in a foreign land. The indenture system itself was a significant challenge. Many Indians were recruited under misleading terms and were often unaware of the harsh conditions they would face in Guyana. They signed contracts that bound them to work on plantations for a specific period, under conditions that were, oftentimes, exploitative. Arriving in a new land with unfamiliar customs, languages, and climate, the first Indian immigrants faced a profound culture shock. The isolation from their homeland and the challenges of adapting to a completely different environment only added to their struggles. The labor-intensive nature of plantation work in Guyana was grueling. Indians were often subjected to long hours of labor in challenging weather conditions, particularly in the sugar and rice plantations. The harsh working conditions took a toll on their physical and mental well-being. Moreover, the living conditions in the early years were often inadequate. Laborers resided in barracks or huts with minimal amenities. Sanitation facilities were basic and overcrowding was common. This contributed to health challenges and the spread of diseases. The Indians brought with them not only labor, but a rich treasury of their own customs, languages, and traditions. The strains of Bajpuri and Hindi echoed in the air, and rituals performed on the banks of the Demerara River mirrored those along the Ganges. Since 1838, Indians have entirely rewritten the societal values and traditions in Guyana. Along with traditional values set down by indigenous tribes, Indians have played a great role in what we know as Guyana today. The country is officially an English-speaking nation. However, the local lingo and expressions are full of Hindi and Bhojpuri. It has also given birth to Guyanese Hindi or Hinglish, as the locals call it. To put it simply, consider speaking in English and and Hindi at the same time. You can hear echoes of this language in everyday conversations, from the vibrant markets of Georgetown to the quaint villages nestled along the banks of the Essequibo River. Phrases like Wa Mek You Do So or Come Le We Go are just some examples of what Hinglish can sound like. But language isn't the only way Indians have impacted how life is enjoyed in Guyana. That's right, the delicious food that we all know Indian cuisine to be has taken over Guyana as well. Cumin, coriander, turmeric, and an array of aromatic spices once native to the Indian subcontinent have found a second home in the markets and kitchens of Guyana. The national palate revolves around these traditionally Indian ingredients. Roti, an Indian type of flatbread, has become an iconic dish in Guyana. Whether filled with curried vegetables, chickpeas, or succulent meats, the roti embodies the fusion of Indian culinary techniques with local ingredients. And we all love the way Indians make their curries, so it's no surprise that Guyana's cuisine is known for its curry flavors, along with the aromatic combination of spices. Whether it's chicken curry, shrimp curry, or dal curry, the variations are as diverse as the communities that savor them.
The festivals celebrated across Guyana bear the distinct impression of the Indian diaspora. Originally a Hindu festival, Diwali has transcended religious boundaries to become a national celebration, embraced by people of all backgrounds. Guyana lights up with traditional Indian oil lamps named Diaz, while the sky ignites with a vibrant display of fireworks every year. Oh, and don't forget about the exchange of sweets at Diwali, done to represent a sweet memory you make with your loved ones. The colorful revelry of Fagwa echoes across Guyana. Fagwa is a celebration of the triumph of good over evil and has become a carnival of colors that transcends religious lines. Faces smeared with vibrant powders, laughter resonating through the air, and a sense of camaraderie characterize this celebration that unites Guyanese of diverse backgrounds. But don't think that Guyana is a haven only for Hindu Indians. The country also largely celebrates Eid al Fitr an Islamic holiday that is celebrated after fasting throughout the month of Ramadan. In the country, you can notice clear anticipation of this time as markets light up with preparations, traditional outfits, and a sense of strong community. Mashramani, the national festival of Guyana, bears the stamp of Indian cultural influence, particularly in its lively and colorful costumes. Originally a celebration of Guyana's Republic Day, Mashramani has evolved into a carnival of music, dance, and vibrant displays that showcase the nation's cultural diversity. The incorporation of Indian-inspired elements, from traditional costumes to dance routines, reflects the enduring impact of Indian traditions on this national celebration. Moving Moving on, beyond the spice-infused dishes and lively celebrations, the impact that Indians have had on Guyana extends to daily living habits. One of the most significant influences lies in the close-knit familial structures that characterize many Indian households. The cultural emphasis on strong family ties, respect for elders, and communal living has seeped into the broader social fabric of Guyana. It is not uncommon to witness extended families sharing homes, responsibilities, and celebrations, reflecting the enduring influence of Indian societal norms. The concept of arranged marriages, deeply rooted in Indian traditions, has also made its mark on the social dynamics of Guyana. While evolving over time, the importance of familial involvement in matchmaking persists, intertwining the personal with the communal and emphasizing the significance of compatibility beyond individual desires. Additionally, the Indian community's commitment to education plays a significant role in the Guyanese society. Education is not merely seen as a personal achievement, but as a pathway to uplift entire families and communities. This emphasis on learning has influenced the broader societal attitude contributing to a national ethos that values knowledge and academic achievement. From small businesses to larger enterprises, Indian entrepreneurs have played a crucial role in the economic landscape, fostering self-reliance and contributing to the nation's economic development. This entrepreneurial spirit has influenced the broader society's perception of self-employment and the pursuit of economic independence. Religious practices, deeply embedded in the Indian social fabric, have become integral to the Guyanese way of life. Hindu temples, mosques, and gurdwaras are not merely places of worship for the Indian community, but have become symbols of religious diversity embraced by all. Literature and arts form a key element of cultures from one country to another, and in Guyana, this element has shared references with the Indian classical arts. The pulsating beats of the dolak and the melodious strains of the sitar have found resonance in Guyanese music, creating a unique fusion that blends Indian rhythms with the diverse sounds of the nation. Dance, an art form that encapsulates the spirit of celebration, has been profoundly influenced by Indian traditions. The graceful movements of traditional Indian dance forms like Bharatanatyam and Katak have found a place alongside the energetic rhythms of Afro-Guyanese and indigenous dances. The the result is a dynamic dance landscape that mirrors the amalgamation of cultures, creating a truly unique Guyanese dance identity. The visual arts, including traditional crafts as well as contemporary expressions, also bear the imprint of Indian influence. 
Intricate Mendi designs, traditional Indian jewelry, and vibrant clothing styles have become part of the visual tapestry of Guyanese culture. Moreover, contemporary artists of Indian descent contribute to the nation's art scene, adding their perspectives to the broader artistic dialogue. Literature, too, reflects the impact of Indian culture on Guyana. Whether through the retelling of ancestral stories, the exploration of cultural identities, or the incorporation of Indian languages into written works, the literary landscape of Guyana is intrinsically infused with narratives of the Indian diaspora. Among the leading Indians that reside in Guyana today, Moses Nagamutu is a prominent Guyanese politician of Indian descent. He has held various ministerial positions and served as the Prime Minister of Guyana from 2015 to 2020. Vidyanand Pasau is a respected business figure in Guyana, and his contributions to the business community, especially in the sugar industry, have been notable. Sheikh Moinul Haq is a prominent religious figure in Guyana, known for his leadership and contributions to the Muslim community. Although not residing in Guyana, Gayutra Bahadur, an Indo-Guyanese author and journalist whose work, such as Coolie Woman, explores the history and experiences of indentured laborers. These individuals and many more have made contributions to various fields, including politics, healthcare, business, and literature. The story of the Indian community in Guyana is not merely a chapter in history. It is a living, breathing testament to the indomitable spirit of a people who embarked on a journey that would shape the destiny of an entire nation. And this is the end of our video. If you liked traveling to the past of Indians in Guyana, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. That way, we'll book you a passenger seat on our upcoming video travels. In the meantime, check out this cool video on Indians in Fiji right here.